All right, so let's go ahead and open up Coding with Chrome because we're going to walk through how we can create a birthday countdown here. So if I click Code and I'm going to go into Basic Coding, I'm going to call this Birthday Countdown. So now that we know a little bit about variables and we know a little bit about dates, we can actually use this to calculate some interesting things about our next birthday. So I'm going to go ahead and create a variable called today. I'm going to make that a new date. And we know at this point that this is going to tell us the current time right now. I'm going to go ahead and create a variable called next birthday. And I'm going to set that to new date. My next birthday is on 2016, September 16th. So now I have two variables, and if you want to see what they look like, you know, we can use document.write. We could write today, and then we could just add in a space, and then we could add in next birthday. That's going to give us both dates side by side. So you can see here uh, December 8th and then September 15th. So you can see everything there. So that's working just fine. But what we want to know, let's say we want to know the number of milliseconds we have until our next birthday. Uh, this countdown actually is pretty easy for us to do. Uh, all we have to do is type in, uh, we'll type in document.write. There are, and then we will write document.write uh, next birthday dot get time minus today dot get time. document dot write milliseconds until my next birthday. So that's kind of cool, you know, that, that, that seems like a pretty big number, so it, it would probably be more interesting if I knew uh, how many seconds there were until my next birthday. That might be a little bit more heartening because this is a long way away. It's going to be a while until I get some presents. So we could actually write out a, a blank line here, document.write br. And now we could actually calculate the number of, of seconds until our next birthday. So we can do this, but you know, we're, we're going to get, we're going to be doing a lot of computations over and over again. So we're going to modify our code a little bit. Uh, now we are going to take this out we're going to create a variable here. We'll call this milliseconds, and we will paste that right in. So now we can put milliseconds right in here. Because if we want to calculate the number of seconds, well, the number of seconds is just the number of milliseconds divided by 1,000. So we can actually calculate seconds. Bar seconds is equal to milliseconds divided by 1,000. Notice we don't have a division symbol, so we use this forward slash, which is uh, usually the key uh, with the um, shift question mark on your uh, keyboard, uh, usually right in the lower right corner by your shift key. So now if we want to write document dot write seconds, document, uh, we can see here that we have, well, this is probably not exactly what we want. We don't want to have this decimal. So we can actually make this an integer number as opposed to a decimal number just by saying seconds is equal to parse in seconds. Now, this might look a little confusing, but everything that happens on the right side here, everything that we're setting seconds equal to, uh, we're going to calculate this before we set seconds. So what we're saying is take the variable that's in, or the value that's in seconds and make an integer out of it and then put that back into the seconds value. So you can see here we have document.write. So now if we want to make this complete, we could say document.write there are seconds, document.write seconds until my next birthday. All right, so that, that looks a little bit more... Uh, a little more pleasant. You know, there's only about 24 million seconds till my next birthday. It's a lot of seconds, but you know, I can probably wait that long. Uh, now, if you'll notice, we're actually doing a lot of the same stuff over and over again here. We are, if we move things around, let's go ahead and move this line down here. Uh, we're calculating the milliseconds, we're writing out a message, and then we're writing out an end line. So this actually is pretty uh, similar. So JavaScript fortunately has a way for us to execute these similar things over and over again, and those are called functions. So now if I want to use a function, I can actually create a function that will do these operations over and over again. So if uh, I want to uh, say at the top of my code here, I'll declare a function, and I'll say write birthday 
message is the name of my function. So just like a variable, we're going to give it a, a name, and we want that name to start with a letter or a underscore, though typically they start with letters. And we are going to go ahead and pass in a parameter here. So that parameter is going to be a number, and we'll also pass in a uh, time type. Now, everything that happens within these brackets here, uh, that's going to be part of our function. Uh, this is going to be what identifies our, uh, our actual execution of this function. So if I pass in number and time type, I can actually take what I have here, and I can paste that right into my function. Let's go ahead and space this out properly so that we can see it. So let's go ahead and put some spaces over here. There we go, that looks a little bit better. Now instead of milliseconds, I'll say number, and instead of the message milliseconds, we will go ahead and separate this. And we'll write in document.write time type. So notice that this actually hasn't changed anything on the right side. This function is declared, and we've defined what this function is going to do, uh, but we haven't actually done anything with it. We haven't called it. We haven't executed this function. So now if we want to see, just to make sure that this works, we could call write birthday message, and then we could pass in seconds, and then the word seconds. Now you can see there are two, two or 24,395,180 seconds until my next birthday. So that works just like this code. And the great thing is now we can actually just replace all of this. So we can just say, we're gonna take this away. There we go, and we have a birthday message. And we can take this away too, and we can just call write birthday message milliseconds, milliseconds. So this might look a little confusing because we're saying milliseconds and then we're saying the word milliseconds, but what we're doing here is we're passing in a value uh, this is the, the milliseconds value, and this is a string that just says milliseconds. Now the only reason this looks weird is because we're naming our variables very accurately. We want our variables to, to look what, like what they are. So what we're saying is write the number of milliseconds, but up here for time type, use the string milliseconds. Or write the number of seconds, and then for time type right here, we're going to write seconds. So now we can do this for minutes as well. So var minutes is equal to seconds divided by 60. And then we want to parse the in, we want to convert that into an integer because it's going to be a, a decimal number. Uh, parse in minutes. Now we can write birthday message minutes minutes. And you can see how that was much simpler than having to write all of that code over and over again. Now we don't want to just copy and paste that code because if we copied and pasted this over and over and over again, if we wanted to make a change or we wanted to rewrite some of these words or we wanted to change the message, we'd have to change that every single place we copied and pasted. Now if we want to ch change this message, we can actually just change the function itself. So we can add that in. And now you see this is actually modified uh, so that we get this yay every single time. So that's kind of a nice little feature. Uh, you know, using functions allows us to change a lot of code at the same time. You know, so now we can change from minutes, we could also do hours. Uh, we all know that there are 60 minutes in an hour, so we do minutes divided by 60. And then we say hours is equal to parse in hours. And then we write birthday message hours, hours. Yeah, 6,776 6, hours until my next birthday. Okay, that's pretty good. We could also go one step further and we could say var days is equal to hours divided by 24. So we all know there are 24 hours in a day. And then we'll say days is equal to parse in days. And we'll write our birthday message one more time. There we go, 282 days until my next birthday. So that's, this is getting better and better. This message is getting better and better. Uh, if we wanted to go one more and we wanted to do weeks, we could do var weeks, and we know that there are seven days in a week. So we'll do days divided by seven. Uh, weeks is equal to parse in weeks. Write birthday message weeks. Now we can see we get the complete picture here, 40 weeks until my next birthday. 
So hopefully this helped you to understand dates a little bit. Hopefully this was uh, useful and interesting. Uh, and we will have even more lessons where we identify how we can make this uh, update regularly. So thanks for watching and uh, stay tuned for more.